Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be discussing proper tire inflation maintenance, which includes utilizing a TPMS or tire pressure monitoring system if your vehicle is so equipped, how you should still be performing tire inflation checks on your vehicle using a regular old tire pressure gauge like this or a similar device. And if you do have a TPMS system that has a direct style system, which has sensors in each wheel, how you might want to take a little socket like this and just check the sensor tightness on the wheel because sometimes they come loose. So after the introduction, we'll go through direct and indirect TPMS systems and how they're different. And then we'll talk about where you can locate the proper inflation values for your tires on your vehicle. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. It's free to you. And if you like the content of this video, please hit that like button. So let's start checking out proper tire inflation maintenance steps. Please review the Automotive Information Repair and Modification Guidelines on this screen. Seek the advice of a repair professional if you're unsure how to perform any repair or modification safely and correctly. All repairs and modifications are performed at your own risk. Proper tire inflation maintenance includes one major component. First off, it's a tire pressure gauge. Why do I say that? Even if your vehicle is equipped with TPMS, it doesn't mean it's reporting on all the tires in the vehicle, such as if your vehicle is equipped with a spare tire, most systems that I'm aware of don't include the spare tire at all. In fact, I have a full-size wheel and tire for my spare in this Chevrolet SS sedan, and the Chevrolet TPMS system only looks at the four wheels that are on the vehicle itself, not the spare. So even if I do display real-time values on the driver information center, I don't know what the spare tire pressure is. A spare tire is no good to you unless you know that it's inflated. So regular checks of all the tires, including the spare if you have it, and then that gets into a category of special use spares. The mini or temporary use spares often are at a much different pressure value and they're meant to be used only in temporary lower speed situations. So check the side of the temporary use spare to see what the proper inflation value. Often that'll be somewhere in the 60 PSI range. It will not be the same value as what the regular tires are to be inflated to. But if you have a regular style tire and rim, check what the proper inflation is for the vehicle. You're looking at the decal that's on the driver's side door area, in the door area that's on the B pillar area or on the door itself. Check for that and look for the proper cold inflation value. And once a month, go around and check the tires. Um, make sure that you, again, look at that proper value and then make sure the tires are cold. So after, you know, parking overnight or it's not in the sun, it's just not that they're heated up because the value stated there is cold inflation. So this particular case, I have a uh, electronic gauge. Um, of course, here's the input to the tire pressure portion of it. It has a seatbelt cutter and a glass breaker for accident cases, but you don't need something necessarily like that. It's uh, nice to have, but uh, you know, spend 10 to $20, get a decent one at an auto parts store, wherever you've, your favorite place is to buy auto accessories, and get a good one that you can carry with you if preferable, especially if you're going on a trip. So in that case, I turn on the uh, gauge here, remove the valve stem cap, and the proper way to check the pressure is to you know, apply the nozzle here, trying to get the air from the tire to go into this uh, checker nozzle here. There'll be that little rush of air and it should just be an instantaneous amount, very small amount. And according to this, we have a 35.5 PSI rating. And for this vehicle, the decal says it's supposed to be 36. I know that this particular gauge reports just a hair low. So as long as you're within like a half a pound, these electronic gauges seem to have a slight variance in them. So as long as you're within half a pound of the minimum value for cold inflation, you should be good you should go around to all the locations, again, including the spare tire. So with that, you, of course, return the valve stem cap to its install position. So that's how you check the tire pressures. We've looked at, you know, again, the label that's in the driver's door area. So that's where you check for the proper inflation. And some people will come up and say, well, what about the pressure that's stated on the sidewall of the tire? That is not what you're supposed to put the pressure to on when it's installed on your vehicle. That is the maximum value that the tire manufacturer has stated the tire can go to in worst case scenario, maximum value, and that's like hot. That's as far as it can go. So if whatever the value is here, it should never really ever, I've never, usually that's such a high value compared to what the normal inflation value is. You should never be anywhere close to that in normal situations. Your situation may vary, but uh, 
whatever it says here, of course, you should never exceed that, but follow the directions on the label in your driver's door area or your owner's manual for the proper inflation for those tires on your vehicle. Now, if you have custom tires and rims on your vehicle, it may vary a little bit from the OEM recommendation, but it should be somewhere in that general range. Check with the tire manufacturer. Often they may be able to assist you or the tire installation facility might give you a proper inflation value for those custom situations. But for someone running stock size tires on regular rims on a vehicle, that decal in the driver's door area is where you need to check. Now let's uh, start talking about TPMS systems. The vehicle here has a direct system and there's direct and indirect TPMS. A direct system uses individual sensors in each of the wheels so that it will report a, over wireless communications to a receiver and then to the TPMS subsystem in the car what the real-time pressure value is in the vehicle. Uh, that particular wheel. So in this particular case, the Chevy SS sedan has a driver information center, which has a, a display, which I'll show now, where you can see that I can see the individual real-time pressures for the various four locations. But it, as you notice, it doesn't include the spare. So that's why I'm saying TPMS is great. Potentially, if it reports that much information to you, that's a great aid in figuring out while I'm driving the vehicle, if anything's going wrong but I should really always include the tire pressure check using the tire pressure gauge. The rotational um, component that comes in here with direct systems like that, so when you rotate the tires from, in this case, I can only rotate from side to side if the tires allow, they're not directional. So if I rotate these from side to side, I need to inform the computer that this particular sensor is located over on the driver's side front rather than where it is now. And I have another video where I show the resetting of the TPMS sensors and having the relearn procedure take place for this particular Chevy SS sedan. So anyone that's doing a tire pressure uh, monitoring system relearn, that needs to take place usually after you rotate the tires or you mount new tires. You just never know where the rims are gonna show up necessarily. So they have to reset that when they mount the tires and rims back on the vehicle. So in this case, um, like I said, I'll put a link to that particular procedure for the Chevy SS sedan. It will vary for various manufacturers. I do have another video as well that will talk about uh, the use of an Autel TPMS uh, device, their TS601 device, which I've been used, using to uh, check the TPMS sensors. And then you can see the, you know, the proper sensor IDs in the right location, or you can go through the relearn procedure. So if you want to learn how to perform that procedure or figure out what your tire uh, installation center is doing for you, you can check out that video as well. But the TPMS sensors in these case, uh, this particular case is sending the value to the TPMS sus subsystem. And if the value goes approximately 25% below the normal inflation, which in this case is 36 PSI, so it's nice. PSI less than that, if it goes below that value, um, then it should start alerting with a, you know, that tire icon with the exclamation point showing that there's an alert in the TPMS system and hopefully in this case it would identify the particular tire that uh, has a low pressure. Some systems just have the light that shows up in the instrument panel and you don't know which one it is necessarily. So in that case, again, the only way to figure it out truly, you know, visually you might be able to see it if it looks obviously low. But the tire pressure gauge, again, is important to figure out which one of your tires has that low pressure. Now, an indirect system is uh, common on some European and Japanese vehicles, depending on when they were manufactured. And an indirect system will use the anti-lock brake system wheel speed sensors to determine when a wheel is operating or spinning at a slower rotational speed than the other ones around it, because a low inflated tire has additional drag on it and will cause it to spin at a slightly different pace than the other ones. So that system is potentially okay in figuring out a low tire event. But I had a family member's vehicle that uh, was visiting and I looked at the tires after it had been sitting overnight and they looked a bit low and I thought, hmm, let's check it with a tire pressure gauge. Now the cold inflation for those tires was 37 PSI and I'll put the uh, picture up on what I found. It was 24 PSI, in 23, 24 depending on which tire I was checking. All four tires were low, yet the driver of that vehicle stated that there was no uh, warning, no instrument panel warning about the TPMS system detecting a low pressure event. Now, TPMS is helpful in a lot of cases, but it, depending on the system's intelligence level, it doesn't necessarily always pinpoint when there's an event like that. And the only way to make sure, especially with the indirect system like that, you must do your normal monthly tire pressure checks. That's the only way around it. So 
I hope you learned, you know, again, direct systems, use individual sensors in each wheel. When their tires are rotated, those, the car has to know where uh, those are located now. So that's the relearn procedure, which I mentioned before. The indirect system uses the ABS wheel speed sensors, which is great at figuring out some situations, like I said, a uh, puncture takes place or a screw or so, something's letting pressure out while driving. It starts rotating at a slightly different, slower pace. The system will detect that and alert you, but it's not, a, it's not fully fail safe as we've I illustrated with that example that all the tires are low, just over normal time where the, especially when you go from warm weather where it's at say the normal pressure of 37 in that vehicle's case, and then as the weather got colder, the pressure will drop and then normal uh, oxygen, you know, bleeding out through the tire material will take place. Several months apparently went on before uh, I, I checked it and it was down to 24. So TPMS is helpful, but it's not a fail safe for every situation. So if you have a TPMS, uh, in feature vehicle, great. Uh, hopefully it's a direct system that it displays it like this particular vehicle does. But if you don't, um, or even if you do, make sure you use a tire pressure gauge to check your tire pressures. One additional suggestion I give you is to make sure that you check the valve stem style TPMS sensor tightness every time you check the tire pressure once a month. Uh, the nut that secures the TPMS sensor on this valve stem style to the rim sometimes will uh, get a little loose and start letting air bleed through by the O-ring on the backside of the sensor on the inside of the rim. So I just take a 12 millimeter socket and it fits over the uh, cap here and everything. I just make sure it feels tight because sometimes they start getting a little bit loose and I've seen reports of air leakage through that. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If you found this video informative, I would greatly appreciate it. You hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. It's free to you. And come back to the Retro Car Guy 530 LLC YouTube channel for more maintenance tips such as this. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button. If this is the first time you stop by the channel, please click the subscribe button to the right. It's free. Click that bell notification to get notified when I upload new videos. Follow Retro Car Guy 530 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. Thanks for coming to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.